I'm Alex R. Wagner, and this is No News is News. Guys, I guess just don't fall the fucking sky, you know. What, you gonna come here? Come here? You wanna come up here? Hi. Hello, everybody. Meet Jerry. This is Jerry. We live on Kramer Lane, and my last dog's name was Elaine. And now I'm over here with Mr. Jerry. Jerry, you got anything to say? About the Tyson uh, Jake Paul fight, uh, Jerry, Jerry's just as upset as I am. Um, fake news, fake fight, and now we're all as human beings just gonna sit here and act like, oh, it, 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 hey, at least I didn't waste my entire Friday night. Hey, um, yeah, you know, Tyson, um, you know, he he stuck around. It was it was cool to see him back in the ring. The guy did, couldn't even bend his legs. Like, you know when you see, like, a five-year-old or a toddler, like, being like, oh, oh, I'm going to box you. That's any human being. That was not Mike Tyson last night. The final promotion of the Jake Paul-Mike Tyson fight was literally seconds after our last episode aired, Mike Tyson slapped Jake Paul in the face at the weigh-in. <laughs> But then we all knew that Jake Paul and Mike Tyson wasn't, like, Mike Tyson wasn't, he wasn't going to win because, I mean, dudes, were, dudes walking around naked on Netflix, and that's, that's the meme we have now. Love you. Love you, too. <laughs> it's that, and then it's the meme, which I'll put right here, which is like, that Netflix's stream was down. But again, 40, 50 million people on one live stream. Hey, nice test, right? But I will say, if the Chiefs are still undefeated on Christmas Day, good luck with that live stream if you have that go down. Because football fans, especially Chiefs fans and NFL fans, that close to a perfect season will be wildly upset. Monday Night Raw starts in January on Netflix, which means that we're going to all be able to see wrestling once again in our households. Soon as Donald Trump is elected, wrestling becomes wrestling again. It's it's crazy. We're back in the 90s, people. Mike Tyson losing fights and uh, wrestling being a thing on Netflix. With the Mike Tyson fight out of our minds, which it will be in 24 to 48 hours, we're going to go back to the number one story of Friday. It's kind of funny how they were able to slide this under the rug at the end of the week, and then the Tyson fight actually overtook this news as the main story. But I'm sure for the next week, we will still hear all about it. RFK, Robert Kennedy Jr., independent candidate of the United States government. <laughs> Gonna take red food dye number 40 out of everything. No more Doritos for any of you. And the ladies at The View are wildly upset because they love their blue Fanta more than anything. I have to put on my glasses for this, uh, talking about RFK and some of the things he believes. So he falsely linked vaccines to autism. He called the coronavirus vaccine the deadliest vaccine ever made. He argues government employees have an interest in mass poisoning the American people. He incorrectly suggests AIDS may not be caused by HIV. He falsely argues children's gender identity can be impacted by water. He falsely to touted Invermectin and hydrochloroquine as effective COVID treatments. He argued COVID-19 was ethnically targeted to spare Ashkenazi Jews and Chinese people. He claims 5G high-speed wireless network is used to control our behavior. Stop, you're making and me go, sick, look yeah. at, go look at his role <laughs> in measles in Samoa. Oh, so well, that's your the, new, new Secretary of Health, America. The, uh, thank you for voting for Donald Trump. The measles is a good segue to work. Uh, I, I can't spend this entire segment without any kind of defense of RFK. And the arrogance of the people that are left over in the mainstream media is insane. But CNN has one correspondent, since they fired the other guy for being racist or whatever. They have one guy left, Scott Jennings, who's single-handedly bringing in all of the ratings for the entire network. And here he is 
defending RFK with a group of people that really like red food dye number 40. If we're being intellectually honest, there's really no good reason why Bobby Kennedy, RFK Jr. should be HHS secretary. An advisor, uh, a confidant, somebody who, who talks to the president and, and advises, but there's no managerial experience in his resume. There's nothing that says he is qualified to do this job, this job that is in charge of the health of all of us, all these different lanes. If he has views and has insights around food sources, around vaccines, then those should be given in advisory roles. Why? But well, because... Well, what were the qualifications of the previous ones? Well, I think it's important to always remember that you put yourself... Say that again? What were the management qualifications? I mean, Xavier Becerra... I'm not talking about the previous. It, I'm, talking it, about, I'm looking forward. I know, I, but, I, but you're, you're calling into question whether he could actually do this job. And I think it's Absolutely. I think America is now, and I think... And I think, and I think, I think it's important to, to discuss it, because Xavier Becerra was just a lawyer and a politician with no management experience. So, so there's two negative... Sylvia, two Sylvia, Sylvia, make a Sylvia right. Burwell was a Walmart lobbyist. Donna Shalala was a university person. Look, the RFK fact, Jr. Fact is, is a nut. The fact, okay, so that's different than what you just said. He, he, you just he's, said he's nut. he doesn't possess the requisite managerial experience, but then we get to the real issue here, which is you want to insult the man, which is your right to do because you oppose them in the election. But you, the doctor, are raising the issues that he has been raising, and, and I think they're appropriate questions to raise. I don't know whether he can be confirmed or not. The vaccine stuff at the table is obviously going to be the flashpoint of this hearing. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you one thing. This whole issue of the CDC and these public health agencies, look, public trust in the health regime in this country is as low as it's ever but been. But why? It's Scott. because of COVID. Right. Because of school closures. Because of mask wait, wait, mandates. Wait, wait, because wait, because, because me, this country Dr. was... Because this, let, me, but let me just finish. Yeah. Because this country was drugged through a bunch of condescending and heavy-handed mandates that all turned out to be garbage and that's why it's low and the Scott, questions are valid Scott, and Scott, rfk Scott, but, is the answer to all of that yeah but dude, not, but rfk helped promote the uh, the uh, the assault on the cdc that lowered the, the disinformation that no led the to, cdc than, led to its own but scott jennings isn't the only person in america that uh has some common sense that like is like okay yeah rfk got nominated and here is God damn, man. Mayor Adams, New York City mayor, the only mayor, the only governor of any blue state right now to live in reality. And here he is having to defend RFK on The View. Well, you heard us talking about um, RFK Jr. being the head of HHS. What do you think about that uh, appointment? The um, ex executives will uh, nominate and bring in uh, those who they believe will move their vision forward. And uh, everything from the fluoride uh, issue, I believe we should have fluoride in the water based on what my experts are telling me. But let's be clear, we have a real problem with our food in our country. And we need to watch what we're feeding our children. And what is I'm, the major problem, do you think? It's, uh, too much hormones. Uh, um, you know, many people know, people know, people know my, you know, I, I almost lost my sight with diabetes. Mm -hmm. um, the doctor told me I would be blind in a year. I was going to lose my fingers and toes. And it was my food. It wasn't my DNA. But, it was my dinner. But it's, JFK <laughs> Jr. Um, ate, <laughs> RFK, Jr. R RFK Jr. ate some pork and now he has a brain worm. Is he the person that should be in charge of that? <laughs> yeah, well, and let, let's, of let's, our let's, food? Let's, right. And let's understand this also. In all of these agencies... There are thousands of employees and experts that understand these topics and their rules, their regulations. Mayor, a lot of them want to resign. When they see some of the people that are going to be on top, there's going to th I think there's going to be a mass exodus yeah. of people who have the institutional knowledge and the institutional memory and DOD well, I would hope so at HHS. Thing. Who wants to work in, yeah. and under me, our cook? And let me respond to that. <laughs> it, if we love our country then no one individual should take us away from our mission. Yes. If you dedicated your life to a particular place, I dedicated my life to law enforcement. So if a new commissioner came in that I disagreed with, I was not going to say I'm going to resign. Let's love the country. Let's love our cities. Let's get away from the rhetoric of the professionalism that we know. Those are experts in this. They're going to look at his proposal, do a real analysis, and make these decisions. It happens every day. Mayor Adams is the only person in the entire Democrat Party left that is like, are we still trying to win, or do we just want to, like, lose every election moving forward? I, I just, I don't, I don't get it. I think this is why Andrew Cuomo just, like, left. He was like, oh, I gave a bad back rub. All right, goodbye then. Because if you're, like, a common-sense denominator Democrat, 
there's really not a place for you on The View. Well, okay, first I'm going to go back to your original comment. I was calling for the dismantling of hate in our country. Uh, our Sikhs who are being attacked, LGBTQ uh, members are being attacked, African Americans, uh, Jews. Uh, I'm, I say let's dismantle the hate. And what you saw in this city, in this election, where you saw a shift in the city becoming, the state becoming redder, is because we stopped talking about working class people issues. When, when mom and pops are afraid, I can't pay my college tuition. Uh, the, the rent is too damn high. Um, Health care is too expensive. We stop talking to everyday New Yorkers and Americans. When I'm in the street talking to them, they're not asking me, Eric, tell me about uh, fascism. They're talking about finance. They're not talking about Hitler. They're talking about housing. We need to talk to everyday working class people. And we stop doing that. Mm -hmm. And those are the issues that they are afraid of. They're afraid of the future of their children. So that was the RFK hysteria, which I'm sure has just started and isn't going to stop since they're going to funnel in billions and billions of dollars through pharmaceutical ads to stop the man who wants to stop the pharmaceutical ads. But there's someone that's even worse than RFK. And her name is Tulsi Gabber, and she wants to murder everybody. Here's AOC claiming that Tulsi Gabber is a warmonger. And we it's haven't even gotten to Tulsi Gabber potentially having access to national security information. And Russia loves it, loves her. And I actually think almost more than Matt Gates, Tulsi Gabbard's appointment yeah. is devastating. And Tulsi Gabbard's nomination as much as she says that she's an anti-war person, she's not. Yeah. She supports very pro-war individuals. Including abroad. in Syria. And let's be very <laughs> clear, yeah. a Tulsi Gabbard nomination is yeah. a pro-war nomination yes. globally. As, Point blank, period. As is uh, Donald Trump as president of the United States. I don't, I just don't. Back in the day when Joe Rogan was a Democrat liberal, he was interviewing some Democrat or liberal journalist uh, that pretty much was AOC. And here's another person just deciding that Tulsi Gabbard is an evil human being. The people that wanted to end the Federal Reserve and, you know, restore America to a budget. Well, he did a budget and he found out that there's a multi-million dollar monkey island by Fauci. Lavish spending by the government. So he also, of course, takes some shots at Dr. Fauci and says some of, ex some of his experiments are extremely costly. So here are some of the standouts where he sort of airs out those grievances. Accepting Barbie doll photos submitted by scammers to get COVID relief funds from a portion of an 800 billion allocation in PPP funds. Other expenses highlighted were $659 billion for national debt interest, $33 million to run Dr. Fauci's state-owned research island of 3,000 monkeys sent out for research. But if you thought that the monkey island government experiment thing by Fauci was weird, uh, no. No, the Democrats have a plan for how to attack all of the cabinet members that are clearly amazing. Um, and their solution is to create the shadow cabinet. So, so like the, so a shadow government. So you want to so shadow government. Trump attempts to weaponize the justice system against his political opponents with Matt Gates at the helm. We could see incoming Senator Adam Schiff as our shadow attorney general arguing against replacing our independent prosecutors with Trump loyalists. If Trump seeks to eliminate the Department of Education, Congresswoman Johanna Hayes, a former Teacher of the Year, could step up as Shadow Education Secretary to loudly defend public education in the United States. Pitching of this Shadow Cabinet thing, and it just feels like, like a segment on MSNBC in the third quarter of the hour of Rachel Maddow at like 9.45 at night. Like, they're attempting wild things with no organization. And then the person that they have speaking on this, guess what? This dude is leaving Congress at the end of this year. He already lost his seat in this election. And there's one more idea. 
a shadow government, similar to the UK, a group of lawmakers that mirrors the cabinet and publicly challenges them. Say Senator-elect Adam Schiff as shadow attorney general, Congressman Gregory Meeks as secretary of state, or Colorado Senator Michael Bennett as treasury secretary. Well, that idea isn't just coming from a strategist, but a lawmaker. And joining me now, the man behind this idea, Congressman Wiley Nickel, a Democrat from North Carolina. No dream music needed. You're in person with us. Congressman, why do you think this is the way to possibly challenge this administration? First of all, this is something we can do. This is something that definitely can happen. And they've been doing it for over 100 years in the UK. Mm -hmm. So this is an idea that time, his time has come. And if we do the exact same thing, against Trump, we're going to get the same results. We have to step up our game. We have to go toe to toe with Trump. And it's not just about saying, you know, what, what we're against. It's about saying what we're for and putting our best messengers out there to go toe to toe. You know, they put Elise Stefanik at the UN. We should have someone going one on one with her talking about, you know, what we would do better and, and why the, the choices they make are wrong. So what would this look like? It would be somebody who acts as if it was the State of the Union, a response they would give every time there is a major speech or press conference, or they'd have their own issue or white papers? What would this look like in practice? It, first and foremost, it's about accountability. It's about keeping you know, public pressure on every member of the cabinet. When they step out of line, you got someone you know, who is there ready to call them out. So like, you go out and pitch our bad idea, man. You're leaving anyway. <laughs> Crazy. Donald Trump did a dinner, and when he was at the dinner, he... He spoke, and uh, he was supposed to announce the Department of the Interior designer guy or whatever uh, tomorrow, as in, like, the next day. But he, he gets on stage and, well. I have a big announcement, and I won't tell you it's, I won't tell you the name of his, uh, the exact name. I think he's an incredible person. He's got an unbelievably wonderful wife named Catherine. So I won't tell you his name. Might be something like Bergam. Bergam. He's from North Dakota. He's going to be announced tomorrow for a very big position. So everybody's waiting. There he is. Hi, Doug. He's going to be announced tomorrow. And we have somebody else that's probably coming up with him to be announced, who's a big one. And we're going to do things with energy and with land, interior, that is going to be incredible. And so I look forward to doing the formal announcement Although this is a pretty big announcement right now. Actually, he's going to head the Department of Interior and he's going to be fantastic. All right. Good, Doug. Congratulations, Catherine. <laughs> he just slowly keeps hinting at it until he finally is like, you know what? That's good enough. I love the theory that Joe Biden voted for Trump. I, I don't think it's true. I mean, maybe in the voting booth he did. <laughs> I don't know. Joe Rogan seems to think that Joe Biden definitely voted for Trump. I think he's satisfied. He's satisfied with the result. Either way. That smile is a little too big. I think he got screwed over by Chuck Schumer, Obama, and Nancy Pelosi. And they were all like, you're too old. And it's like, y'all are fucking old too. And, and then they lost. Because you didn't pick... An old white guy. Charles Barkley got attacked in the comment section of his TikTok or something. And so now this old guy is like, excuse me, people are allowed to be Republican. I voted for Kamala Harris. And I'm like, oh, no, please don't, don't admit it. Okay. I want to congratulate President-elect Trump. Uh... Y'all won fair and square. I want to congratulate you. I want you to do the best for the American people because I got some numbers here. 75 million people voted for President-elect Trump. 71 million people voted for Kamala Harris. So it's not a contest in my eyes where I won't all 75 and 71 million to be successful. They're all Americans. He's the president of the United States, and I wish him nothing but the best. But we lost. And I just want to say this to the Democrats, which uh, I'm an independent who voted Democratic. Do me this favor. Shut the f up. 
When you win, you get to say what you want to. When you lose, you need to shut the hell up. Oh, President Biden, didn't uh, they didn't get him out the race soon enough. Kamala didn't do this. We lost because we had no game plan. We still haven't solved the immigration problem, have no viable answers, never addressed inflation, bringing all these stupid stars out to rally the vote. What was that? Hey, I love Beyonce. What bringing her out? That ain't going to make me vote a certain way. Cardi B. I like Cardi B. That ain't going to make me vote a certain type of way. You guys lost because y'all stupid. But if you thought Charles Barkley was crazy for wanting people to vote for people that wanted to vote for people that wanted to vote for, here's a crazy teacher. She's a crazy teacher. And, uh... She threatened the lives of uh, everybody that voted for Donald Trump on TikTok. And then, oops, that was public. If you voted for Trump, literally, please delete me. Block me, get rid of everything of me or step to me so that I know what's up and then I can handle you how I see fit. Just because you won doesn't mean we don't remember who the blank you voted for. You're not in the clear. Please, please don't test your gangster on me because you will end on a stretcher gone forever. What does that mean exactly? Yeah, so it, that, it sounds like a threat. It sounds very extreme. And again, I was in a moment of high emotions and I shouldn't have ever posted the video. Um, but what I really, the message I was trying to get across and it came off very wrong was, you know, if this is going to give people the almost permission in their minds to enact violence against women or anybody. Um, I wanted to basically just say, like, I'm not going to go down without a fight. I mean, you know, it's my life's dream to be a teacher. Um, I consider those kids my kids because I don't have any of my own. Um, and they feel that for me. And I just, it's so fulfilling. It's so rewarding. Um, and I really, I know that what people see right now I don't look like that person, but I truly would do anything to help any child and any family in need. Just because you won doesn't mean we don't remember who the f you voted for. You're not in the clear. And just please, please don't test your gangster on me because you will end on a stretcher, gone forever. And so now she's on a news program crying about how she loves children because she has none but maybe she should just have some because the mental illness is prime example did you have ptsd from this last election well this lady did and she's gonna recall her pa her ptsd from 2016 to 2024 and how her husband had to deal with this outrageous nonsense. I was literally having PTSD attack from mm. 2016. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was reliving 2016 in my living room just two days ago. I, I was hyperventilating. I was shaking. I went into my bedroom. I hid under the same exact covers that I was under eight years ago. Um, I mean, it was terrible. And finally, I said, I can't watch. I'm turning the TV off. Maybe it, it I, I said, to, I said to my husband, do you think that the blue wall will hold? And he's going, it'll hold, it'll hold. Don't worry. Just try to rest. So I tried to rest. That was impossible. I was just tossing and turning like horrible he finally came in i said what's going on he said oh it's about the same and he fell asleep and then at the, so about two two o'clock in the morning i i said i can't stand anymore i'm gonna look on my phone and uh, i was kind of hoping one of you had texted me but no you you all copped out and so so i opened up my text thread or opened up my phone and literally on x 10 minutes before the networks had called it for Trump. And 
I started screaming and I was shaking my husband in bed. And there's just, I was hysterically crying. I will use actually the word hysterical to mean exactly what it means. I was a mm. woman who was in a complete emotional meltdown. And um, so I, I said to Richard at the top of my lungs in the middle of the night in the dark, why does America hate women? I feel so bad for her husband. You, you know you voted for Trump. <laughs> oh no, yeah, the blue wall is definitely gonna stay. Stay out of the living room. Oh well, I fell asleep. I wasn't even really paying attention. Yeah, we are. I I checked one of my buddies, and at like 11 p.m., we already knew Trump won, so I went to bed. <laughs> Meanwhile, the PA election board or people or something in some place. They're uh, they're like, let's throw out the votes now because they want to try to steal a Senate race or something. I don't know. We reject all three categories of these ballots. You, your your motion is to reject or dismiss the challenges Challenge. uh, in this category right. in front of you? Correct. Yep. I'm not going to second that, mostly because I think we all know that precedent by a court doesn't matter anymore in this country. And people violate laws anytime they want so for me, if I violate this law, it's because I want a court to pay attention to it. Al Gore having an entire meltdown. Basically, the man is like, I'm going to get really angry and get you angry away. I'm inciting violence. I don't want you guys to insurrect the global warming. Let's not do this. They're raising the alarm. And if you look at the bottom statement, these peer reviewed, these scientists say in this peer reviewed study, we estimate a collapse around mid-century. What? What? Some of the load-bearing elements of our entire Earth ecological system are at risk. And what are we doing? Just talking away, talking away, not making much progress. Again, I'm getting stirred up here, so I'll try to calm down. I'm going to hand it to Gavin here in a minute, and he'll maybe uh, take the temperature down a little bit. Did you know that the first image in Rocky was of Jesus? Sylvester Stallone is a goddamn genius. When I did Rocky, if you remember, the first image was a picture of Jesus, and it says Resurrection AC Club. I found a church that had been converted to a boxing ring. So the image pans down from Jesus onto Rocky being hit. And at that moment, he was a chosen person, and that's how I began the journey. Something was going to happen. This man was going to go through a metamorphosis and change lives, just like President Trump. Donald Trump being the jokester about Elon Musk being like, I love, I love you. I love you, Elon. I love you, Elon. I love you, Elon. I love you. I love you. I love you. We have a man who has a seriously high IQ. You know, I'm a person that believes in high IQs, and his is about as high as they get. Uh, he launched a rocket three weeks ago, and then he went to Pennsylvania, the campaign, because he considered this more important than launching rockets that cost billions of dollars. Elon Musk, Elon. What a job. What a job he does. He's a great, and he happens to be a really good guy. You know, he likes this place. I can't get him out of here. He just likes this place. And finally today, Chicago's had enough of this nonsense. You can see the people from the South Side ready to put a cap in the ass of this mayor. And I'm like, yo, they wearing a lot of red. So y'all need to, you know, it's Chicago. Mr. Sims, direct your attention towards me, please. You're a criminal. Why do I got to address you? The feds need to address you. DOJ need to address you. And, pro and hopefully Donald Trump will address you because you're going to protect the undocumented. Keep thinking you ain't going to. You ain't going to buy about what the president of the United States said. Everybody know better than that. Yeah. Yeah. So you and the rest of them that know what time it is, y'all come on. You leave that loser where he is. He's a loser. He's a loser. Loser. I'm from Chicago, so I know, like, this is, these people are like, you don't want to get rid of the migrants? Then we'll get rid of them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know how. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Inglewood, watch Chirac. Goodbye. I'm Alex R. Wagner. This has been November 15th slash 16th. No news is news.
I will see you tomorrow night.